Cause a heart that forgives is the heart that will live Totally free from the pain of the past And the heart that lets go is the heart that will know so much freedom Lord, I want to let it go hey, Hallelujah God, I need to let it go Lord it's been holding me back and I don't want it I don't want it I don't I don't want it no more I don't know exactly what to do to get rid of it but here I am Lord Jesus here I am oh here I am Lord Jesus but I'm gonna go ahead and um, mute everyone except for me and Kim, and um, and we'll go ahead and get started. And Kim can, or Kim, do you want to you want to get somebody to pray? Yes. Who do we have on tonight? Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. You can't see everybody. Oh, uh, Dr. Keisha. Yes. Can you pray for us tonight? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Very good. We're glad. Thank you. Thank I was, you. I was trying to remain hidden, but okay. Uh -huh. that, that, no. that ain't happening. Mm. No, okay. No. If we can... Father God, we thank you tonight just for the opportunity to gather together, Lord, and to learn in your name. Lord, we thank you for everyone who is in attendance in this meeting tonight, and we thank you for everyone who's going to be in attendance in this meeting tonight, Lord. We ask that something that is said tonight or some word that we receive tonight, Lord, touches our soul and makes us want to chase after you more. Yes. This name of the group is God Stalkers, Lord, and that is my desire, and I'm sure it is the desire of the others in the group to be a God Stalker as well. Lord, please guide this group. Please keep us safe and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Well, we're going to jump in because we've got a lot to cover. So, Ms. Kim, you want to do the review from last week? Sure. I'll go with the review. Um, well, last week, you know, the, the weeks prior, we did the different God stalkers, and I think we did one through five, then five through ten. Last week, we actually did... Um, 11 through 16 it was you hide and you seek and that talked about you know being hidden you know under the wings of the lord and it talked about seeking god with your whole heart so that's what number 11 was and i know there's some new people on um tonight so it is so nice to have you here um and you can always go back to the emails that comes to you and it'll show you the class from the week before Okay, so that was number 11. Number 12 was you practice good posture. And it talked about posture in reference to having a heart, you know, open heart to receive, kneeling in honor, you know, bowing before the Lord. So that's the type of posture, standing in confidence, you know, when you minister the word or when you talk to someone about the word. So that's what that one, you know, stood for. Number 13, you are undercover meaning that you understand covering you understand you know that in in the word or it talks about you know honoring your parents because your parents cover you honor your leaders because you understand what it is to be covered by someone you know even when it comes to government and stuff like that leadership and your political leadership in your community it talked about being able to submit and and you know obedience and and we said that one thing about that is every good leader was a good follower okay so if you know how to be a good follower you definitely will know how to be a good leader so that was number 13. number 14 um says you are an, an endurance runner <laughs> and i like that um it talked about running this race that god has set before us with patience you know in hebrews 12 1 that's what it talks about so that's where that thing went um, we, we talked about, you know, being um, patient, um, running this race before God, you know, the way that he chooses for us to run. So that was number 14. Number 15 um, was you are an action hero. And I just thought that one was just great. Meaning you not only are you a hearer of the word, but you are a doer of the word. So that means 
you are you're doing something. The action hero does something. It just an uh, action hero don't just sit around. Um, an action hero is someone who gets the job done. And so that is what that one talked about. It also talked about going to all the world. So you know, as God stalkers, as action heroes, our job is to minister to people and, and, and tell people about Christ. So we're not just God stalkers who sit around and do nothing. So number 16 was um, you're the walking dead. And, and I like that one because it talks about how in the flesh we got to die daily. Why? Because if we don't, this flesh, the Bible says there's nothing good in it. So if we don't learn to die daily against our flesh, against the things that annoy us and upset us, we will be going off at any minute at any time. So that's what that scripture talked about, you know, being crucified through Christ um, and that the flesh profits us nothing. So number 17. Now, this is the one that we didn't get into last week. So I'm going to start off with number 17. And after that, um, Sister Gwen is going to jump in, you know, with the new, with the other ones that will finish this, hopefully, um, finish this hopefully. session, <laughs> Confessions <laughs> of a Gospel. All right. So number 17 says, you're an attentive lover. <laughs> you're an attentive lover. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about love, right? And, and you know what I love about that um, scripture? It, 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 it tells us that, you know, we can do a lot of things, but if we don't have love, it profits us nothing. You know, it, it talks about how we can speak with these great tongues. You know, I, I tell people, when I was growing up in church and I was a little girl, I used to hear someone speak in tongues and it was like, fire came down from heaven. You know, it was like, oh my God, they must be so deep. They're so close to God. <laughs> but then I read the scripture that talks about love and it tells me no matter how much you speak in tongues, you know, you can even give your body to be burned. If you don't have love, it, it profits you nothing. So that is why it, it, it lets us see just how important love is to God. Why it's so important as a God stalker that we show love? Because God says you can burn, you can have your body to be burned and it means nothing if you don't love. You can have the gift of prophecies. And that's why I, I don't get caught up in people's gifts because the word of God says, wow, you can speak in all these tongues. You can have the gift of prophecy. You know, you can get, and you, but if you don't love, it means nothing. So we got to understand being an attentive lover. God stalker, being a God stalker means you are a lover <laughs> and an attentive lover too. And I like the word attentive because we all know when we are with our, 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 our significant other and, and, and it's a difference when someone is attentive to you. And that is what it is in this walk with Christ. We are attentive lovers, meaning, no, 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 I will not be the one who prophesies and don't love. No, I will be careful of the fact that I'm not the one who's speaking all these tongues, but I'm the meanest thing in the church. And that when the people see me coming, they want to run. No, I'm not going to be the one who can sing like if heaven is coming down, but I have no love. So when the people see me coming, they run. No, so we got to be attentive lovers in, in, in Christ. That is one of the things that a God stalker does. So the next scripture says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wow, that is really a good one. <laughs> and that is Matthew 12, 3, right? So it's talking about, you know, loving that neighbor. That's, that's a commandment from God, you know? And, and we, we all have neighbors. We all have people we know we go to church with. You know, yes, yeah, some people can be annoying, but does that take away the fact that God said to continue to love them? No, we still have to be an attentive lover to our neighbor. So if, I'm, if you're struggling in that neighbor loving area, <laughs> then what you do is you go to God and you ask him to help you in that area. But not loving your neighbor is just not acceptable to God. Why? Because he gave us that as a commandment. You know, so it is important to him. Love is so important to God. That is why I really like number 17, where, you know, the attentive lover as a God stalker. Okay, so now 
It says, they will know that you are a Christian by your love. That is John 13 and 5 in the NIV. You know, by this, everybody will know that you are his disciples because you love one another. So what does that tell us, saints? It tells us that love, once again, is so important to God. And it's important that we love the right way. You know, not just, oh, yeah, yeah, I love him, but I, ain't, I don't never want to be bothered with him. No. You will know you might be disciple. Because of, and can it be challenging? You know, one thing me and Gwen said, we will always keep it real with you, right? So yes, can it be challenging? Yes, it is challenging. Yes, there's some people that 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 makes this God stalker walk challenging. But the, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So that means he didn't set us up to fail. There's a way of escape. He will show us how to love. So now, in Peter, it says, don't just pretend to love people. <laughs> really? really love people. Come on. First Peter 4 and 8. You know, we, we really do things. We have to really love them. You know, just like I said, no fake love here. We have to really love them. You know, and, does, and, and Sister Kim, does, is, is Sister Kim, are you saying, oh, I got to put up with him? No, 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 no. One thing I know about the guy that we serve, he, I call this, I, I say to people all the time, he pulls our coattail, right? Mm -hmm. That means he pulls your coattail and he says, Kim, Gwen, Samantha, Dr. Keisha, Sharonda, Valerie, Dawn, Chanel, Leslie. He pulls your coattail to say, hey, you know better than that. You know. You saw that sister sitting there, but yet you walked right by her and did not speak, did not open your mouth. <laughs> yes, I know she's, she's trying. Yes, I know she can be annoying. But you know what? I need her to see the light. I need her to see the God in you. And where do we shine as lights? In darkness. So what does that mean? That means we shine in difficult places, difficult situations <laughs> around difficult people. <laughs> Baby, you are now. We have to show this love, saints. We have to. So now, the last one in number 17 says, if you have an alt against your brother, you go to them. You go to them. I like this verse. You go like to the him, verse, right? Do you like the verse or do you like doing that? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I've gotten to the place. I ain't always been there, on, you know? Now. Um, I've gotten to the place where, yeah, I, I, I want to go to my sister. I want to go to my brother because what I do know when I don't, the enemy gets the victory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hear me, hear me well. When we don't, the Bible says, if you have an all, go to your brother. So it doesn't mean go talk about that brother to another brother. Go talk about the situation to another sister. It means you go in love Let's say the word love in love because why we are intentive lovers as God stalkers. So we go in love and we, we try to, you know, work it out. You know what I tell people all the time? I said, try to treat somebody the way you would want to be treated. Because a lot of times, saints, if we take a step back and if we pause, we will handle people differently if we think about, is this the way I want someone to treat me? Come on. Yes. Okay. So go to, go to that person in love. And you know what? Sometimes it may not even work out. Sometimes they still may want to refuse your, your love. And, and, and then the Bible says also go with another witness. See, this thing, to get this thing right is so important to God. He didn't let us off the hook the first time. <laughs> he didn't let a hug when he says if you have an alt go so now i got an alt i go and they still want to act shady oh my god I, i'm done i'm done i, I went you said go <laughs> i went and that's it no no he doesn't let us off the hook saints what does he do now he wants me to bring a witness now he wants me to go again with someone else to try to fix this why because loving one another is so important to god do you know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for us? Yes. So we can go to our brother and sister that we have an art with. He ain't asking you to give up your firstborn. 
He's asking you to go and love. Why? Because God is love. He says, how can you love your, your love me who you never seen, but this don't like your brother? Come on. We are attentive lovers, as God Stalker sings. So I, I, I hope that um, that has helped you. Um, I yeah, hope yeah, number six. Can I say something about that? Yes, you can, my sister. Girl, so, you know, this whole political climate that we're in makes mm -hmm. my soul ache, you know, most of the time. And one of the things that the Lord continues to remind me of, you know how we say, um, like, now, now it's, now it's a big thing to not be politically correct, right? And, mm -hmm. and God showed me that really political correctness is really just being, just considering somebody else before yourself, right? If I, if I want to be called a certain thing, well, why, why not call me that? Why would you disrespect me by calling me something else, right? And so he reminded me that, um, you know, the scripture says that if you are, if, 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 if you feel like it's okay for you to eat meat, but you're sitting across from someone who does not believe that, right? And you know that. And the God says, if you sit down in front of them and you eat meat in front of them, knowing that that's offensive to them, God says, you didn't love that person. So there, and so to me, what cracked me up, I'm losing my background over here. What cracked me up is that's such a small thing, you know, like we, I wouldn't think that, um, I don't know, you, like, you, you just think about really big things when, when we talk about like how we should really love people. You think, you know, we got, he says, I, I lay my, though my body be burned, you know, like we think we got to be something really serious. Ooh, that's some deep love right there. That's some deep love when you burn your body. But you know, God really, yes. he, but God's standard is that we truly prefer other people before ourselves. And that we are more concerned about what's important to them than we are. You know, we, it, it's this, I, I'm going to do me. That whole spirit, that's really anti-Christ. Because Christ's spirit is one of love, you know? And one of, of just, so when you talk about being an attentive lover, it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out of my way to make sure that I love other people. <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> you know why? I'm going to share with you guys really quick, especially that love that neighbor one. Saints, because remember, we, we said we would always keep it real with you guys. I, I remember when I lived in Jersey, I had a neighbor who was just, she was just annoying to me. She really was. She was like so nosy on the block. She just kept a lot of mess going. And I just, me and her just kind of constantly were, were at it, right? And I remember um, one day um, on in Jersey, we have this, the street sweepers. I don't know if you guys, I don't think it's here in Atlanta, but we do have where they come and they sweep the street. So if your car is on that side that they're trying to sweep, they'll give you a ticket, right? So I see my neighbor's car on the wrong side and the sweeper is coming. Now guys, I had plenty opportunity to go ring her bell to say, hey, you need to come and move your car. Are you gonna get it, you know, just to, to give her a heads up because clearly she forgot, right? Because everyone knows we move our cars. So I stood right there and I watched that the people come. I watched them give her a ticket and everything, right? So in the church, save guys. Let's 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 keep it real. Let's keep it real. Loving Jesus, loving Jesus, but not my neighbor, right? So after, after she came out and she saw the ticket, guys, I felt so convicted. I felt so condemned. The Lord, the Lord was like, you know that was not right. You know that was wrong, right? So I said to God, after he pulled my coattail, right? Remember I said he pulls our coattails and he lets us know, you know better than that. You shouldn't have done that. So I said to God, Lord, if you ever give me the opportunity to do something kind for her, 
even though she's probably not going to change, even though she's still going to be annoying and just a nosy neighbor on the block who starts trouble, I said, God, I will show love. I said, God, give me the opportunity again, right? So I would say about three weeks later, I'm outside working in the front of my house in my garden, and her granddaughter gets locked in the car. Oh, my. It's hot. It's summertime. So everyone is beating on the, you know, trying to open the door. They got the, um, you know, the, what you call those things, the clothes hangers. And the Lord reminded me that I had this device that you can s just slide down the window and p unlock the thing, right? Now, mind you, me and this neighbor don't even speak. Mm. But God reminded me of what I said, that God if you give me another chance, I asked him to forgive me. If you give me another chance to show love, I don't care if she never changes. God, I'm going to represent you, right? I went over there and I said to her, I have something. Do you mind if, you know, I let these people who are trying to get it, if they use it, you know, because we don't talk, remember? She said, sure, whatever you got. Well, sure enough, I gave it to the people. Bam, they opened the car. Don't you guys know? From that incident, she became like my best friend on that block. Wow. Because a simple act of love, that is just so how powerful love is. Come on. Now, let's get it straight. It wasn't so much that my love was so powerful for her. My love was so powerful for God that she was able to see it. You understand? It, it wasn't even about her. It was about the fact that I love God and I want to do what's right to please him. So let's get, let's get this straight. Just walking in love is not even about you or the other person. It is, it is about God. It's a God thing. So that lady became one of my best friends. When I moved to Atlanta, we cried together. Do you oh. understand me? Oh. This love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. This love thing is so real and important, saints. We got to get it right. We, we got to get it right. You know, that so, reminds me of um, what the scripture says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. You know, people can say some, some nasty stuff. So you know how you, you're out in a crowd and somebody accidentally bumps into you and, if they, and, and they, they go, oh, I'm sorry. And you're like, oh, no problem. And you walk away. You don't think anything of it. But if that same person bumps into you and don't say nothing, Oh, it's on. Like, you'd be like, uh, excuse me. Like, you'd be so hot. But if, as soon as they say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And basically, we just don't like being disrespected. Like, we want to be acknowledged. And so that's what God is saying when we're supposed to be attentive lovers and that we're supposed to be the ones that give the soft answer. How many road rage incidents would be just shut down if there was a soft answer given. Because as soon as somebody comes up in your face and you come right back at them, all we're doing is escalating, escalating, escalating. And the Lord says, no, a soft answer turns away right. Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And you could be the right one. You could be the one in the right. But he's like, nope, you, you are supposed to be an example of love, an example of my love. Because I mean, imagine he's on the cross they have gone out of their way to have him crucified. And he says, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know. And, that's, and God wants us to be that way towards each other. Tender-hearted, soft-hearted. Like, you know what, God? Man, she must be having a really bad day. You know, that, <laughs> that, that woman at the checkout counter that, in the Kroger line, you know, that's acting ugly, throwing your stuff. You know, it's like, you know what? She's probably having a bad day. And you know, okay. just give her a soft answer. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that, now, um, remember what we said, guys. Um, during, you know, when we talk about something, please feel free to jump in. If, if you have it, if you put it in the chat, we can see it. If you have a question, you know, you can, if you want to make a comment, you, you, if you put it in the chat, then we can unmute your mic. Or if you just ask the question in the chat, that's okay too. But we want you, you know, to feel free to, um, as we go on with the different confessions um, of a God stalker, if you want to jump in, please feel free to do so. Or if you have any questions, 
you can, you know, definitely ask the questions. So um, that was the one that I had. So Sister Gwen is going to take us through the next couple of ones that we have. Okay, so what am I doing? Three, three, uh, three you start on number 18, you are attracted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you know what? And we do have, um, I think I have one more. I added 24, so hopefully we'll get to that. But I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure by the time we're done with this, we're going to have a whole bunch more. And we're going to have a, we're going to have to write a book because there'll be so many because we just keep getting them every week. Even though the service, the, the series is supposed to be over, Lord, uh, but he's not paying attention <laughs> to that. So um, number 18, you know you're a God stalker if you are attractive. And that comes from uh, Romans 10, 15. Let's go there. Okay. Well, one of the and if you have your Bibles or if you have, you know, your Bibles on your phone, sometimes Gwen may call on you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's she, right. She Hello. Call me out to read the scripture, so. <laughs> Hello. And I don't care if you don't have your video on. <laughs> um, Romans 10, verse 15. And I don't know, I... I discovered a couple of weeks ago, I think I mentioned this before, that on, on my iPad, if I use the Bible Gateway app, I can have multiple translations up at one time. I'm dangerous now. Okay, so <laughs> verse 10 and 15, um, I've got, let's see, I'm going to do it from the New Century Version. Romans 10, 15. Um, and before someone can go and tell them that person must be sent, let's go back, 14. Uh, let's see. Nope, I'm gonna go back even further. Let's go to verse 11. Uh, Romans 10 verse 11. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be disappointed. That scripture says anyone because there is no difference between those who are Jews and those who are not. The same Lord is the Lord of all and gives many blessings to all who trust in him. As the scripture says, anyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. Verse 14 says, but before people can ask the Lord for help, they must believe in him. And before they can believe in him, they must hear about him. And for them to hear about the Lord, someone must tell them. And before yeah. someone can go and tell them, that person must be sent. It is written, how beautiful is the person who comes to bring good news. So, you know you are a God sucker if you are attractive because if you are sharing the good news of who this Christ is that we are stalking, you're beautiful. <laughs> the Bible says beautiful feet. And so the way my husband talks about my feet, I'm going to use that scripture on him one day. Look, <laughs> the Bible says I got beautiful feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it says, how beautiful is the person who comes to bring good news? How, isn't that fabulous? We, that makes us beautiful, right? Because um, again, if you, if you are giving a soft answer, that's beautiful. And at some point, people are going to come to you because they know, hey, you know what? So-and-so is going, they, they're going to give me something good. Um, they're going to tell me about this Christ. And I love it. It says, um, anyone who calls, anyone who calls will be saved. But if they don't, they can't know. If they don't hear and so as God stalkers we are sent we're, we're stalking after God but we're we're learning everything we can about him so that we can bring other people to him um, Matthew 5 14 let's go there so you know you are God stalker if you are attractive and This one, there's actually two points in here that I want to bring out. Um, in Matthew 5, 14. I'm going to read it out of my favorite, the Living Translation. <laughs> <laughs> um, go back to 13, because it says in, in um, Matthew 5, 13, 13 to 16, it talks about the fact that we are salt and light. So um, it also, I love I, um, that light part is that we are radiant, right? So if you are radiant, then you are drawing, the, you know, you're drawing people to you. So verse 13 says, let me tell you why you are here. You are here 
to be salt seasoning that brings God, brings out the God flavors of this earth. That's so good, God flavors. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. But verse 14 says, here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. You're here to be radiant, bringing out the God colors in the world, God flavors and God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. Like, you know, um, I hear people say all the time um, that their spiritual life is private, right? And so they, they keep it very close to the chest and they're very closed when it comes to expressing themselves, you know, of, 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 about, you know expressing, the, um, expressing how they feel about God. And here it's saying, God's not a secret to be kept. He's, he is personal, but he's not supposed to be private. We're supposed to go public. It says we're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? So if I make, so, uh, that, the can, I think in the King James it says a candle, you know, that, what is it? You don't put a candle under a bushel. Um, and so he's saying, I'm not gonna hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine, be radiant, keep open house, be generous with your lives by opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous father in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? It's like, he's like, look, I'm putting you up. I'm putting you on a hill. I'm putting you on this light stand not so you can be great and you can be fabulous and everybody can talk about how good you are and so you can set the trends. But I said, I'm setting you on this light stand so you can be attractive, that you can draw people, you can show people what this life with me is like, who I, what, what I'm like, and you can show them the benefits that I provide. Kim, Kim has done a, a blog post on the benefits of being a God stalker. Y'all got to look at it after. I'm, I'll activate it because I hadn't activated the link, but I'll activate it after the, after the meeting tonight. But you've got to be generous with your life and open and sharing so people know how amazing it is to know me. And, and then you will be able to draw them to me. Proverbs, um, Proverbs 1130. Okay, who's going to get that for me? Let me see. <laughs> somebody who's gonna do it let's see i love proverbs wait samantha samantha was the first one here today which meant she was serious oh. about this thing oh. <laughs> samantha i'm gonna ask you here i'm gonna unmute you miss samantha can you read that for me proverbs 11 30 wait i didn't unmute you hold on there we go samantha i did it proverbs 1130. 30. Yes, ma'am. All right. Hey, sis. <laughs> uh oh. I get my glasses too. Girl, trust me, I was running trying to find mine before we started. I was like, wait, what am I going to do? I can't read a thing. Okay. Proverbs <laughs> 1130. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that is wise when it's souls. And he that is wise when it's souls. So you are attracted and, um, and what is it? Oh, and there's another one I want you. So, so while you're there, Samantha, go to 1 Corinthians 9. So he that wins souls is wise, right? Right. So we are attractive because we, are, we know how to, uh, we use the wisdom of God to help us to attract other people to him. Okay, and 1 Corinthians 9. And 19 through 23. 9, 19? Yes, ma'am, 19 through 23. Oh, okay. Okay. 19, all right. For so we said 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and uh -huh. the 19th verse? Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. For though I was for though I was free from all men, I brought myself under bondage to all, that I might gain the more. And I'm reading um it's not okay, go ahead, go ahead. 
that's okay. Uh, let's see. 20. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain Jews to them that are under the law as under the law, not being myself under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, not being without law, to God, but under law, to Christ. And I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. I am become I am become all things to all men, that I may that I may by all means save some. And I do all things for the gospel's sake, that I may be a joint partaker thereof. The twenty-three. Yep. That's it. So listen, so the message translation says, even though I am free of the, of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people, religious, non-religious, meticulous, moralist, loose living, immoralist, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. That is so powerful. I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did all this because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. Isn't that good? He said, I didn't take on their way of life, but I kept, I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. That's so beautiful. That's, I, I think that really speaks to how we, like Romans 12 says, don't be so conformed to this world that you, you know, but that you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so this is showing me, basically God is asking that we we have to go into the world. We have to. We have to go into the world. We have to try to see things from their perspective. We can't be always just uh, preaching hellfire and brimstone to people. People that don't know God, they, can't, they know. The Bible says that eternity has been placed in our hearts. So we know when we're wrong. We know it. We know something is wrong with our lives. But we are just grabbing for every bit of acceptance that we can possibly find. And any any ounce of hope and we're trying to do it by satisfying ourselves so when we come to people that don't know god we can't come in a haughty spirit we can't come trying to make them become like us we gotta first go to where they are we love god because he first loved us he came to us he didn't make us come to him and so that's why that's what god is calling us to be attractive and for us to go into the world and, and understand where people are coming from in their world so that we can bring them to him. Isn't that fabulous? That is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to say, this is Samantha, that I was reading the American Standard Version. Uh -huh. are, you, are you always reading the Message Version? Because I just wanted to know. I, I, That's, I, what I <laughs> That's my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't always read it. I think what is, I think it's good for us to read a bunch of different translations though. So no, I like the message version also. That's why uh, that message translation you hurt my feelings most of the time. So yeah. I read out of I read out of it a lot. I do um the message, the living bible, and I like the new century version a lot. I read that a lot. Yes, okay. But my foundation, see, this is the other thing, though. I've got, I've had very, tw almost 20 years of very foundational teaching, and, and my, I was taught that you, you start with King James, and then you compare everything to King James. So that's, that's really how I do it. And then um, for more modern studies, like public studies, I like to use the new King James just to get all the these and thou's out. And that's a little easier to understand, but... <laughs> But all my, all my memory, like when scripture comes up, it, they're all from the King James. But you wouldn't know that because I'm always talking about the, the message. Thank you so much, Samantha.
You are okay. welcome. Okay, so <laughs> so you were so number 18. So number 19 is, and Kim and I were cracking up over this one. You know you are a God stalker if you are irritating. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not talking irritating like you working all everybody's nerves around you but we are talking about the kind of irritating where you just basically you not you're going to stalk god literally you are not leaving god alone until he answers until he hears until he gives you what you need and and that basically is just letting him know god you're it you're my source and if I can't get it from you, I can't get it. And um, we had a bunch of examples. So one of them was, um, well, let's go to Luke 11, because I like this one. You know how you got, I was thinking about how I do my family. I'll ask my family the most ridiculous stuff. And I'll know before I ask that they do not want to be bothered with me. <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care one bit. I'm like, um i want this you got it i know you can do it for me i know you can give it to me and i'm just gonna keep asking I'm, i'll wear them out i follow my sister around and i lived with her for a few years i would just follow around look 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 I, this is what i want i need you to but we both make jewelry and i was like uh i'm gonna need you to give me some of them antique beads that you just got and she will nope 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 but it doesn't keep me from going after her. i'm like uh-uh I'm, I'm gonna get it eventually because i know you got what i need and so god wants us to be like that with him so luke 11 5 through 13 it says then he said imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said friend now in the middle of the night that's that's the key right here friend lend me three loaves of bread an old friend traveling through just showed up and i don't have a thing on hand verse 7 says the friend answers from his bed don't bother me the door is locked my children are all down for the night i can't get up to give you anything verse 8 but let me tell you even if he won't get up because he's a friend if you stand your ground knocking and waking all the neighbors He'll finally get up and get you whatever you need. Verse 9 says, here's what I'm saying. Ask and you'll get. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. Verse 10 says, don't bargain with God. Be direct. Don't play around with it. Don't, don't ask sheepishly as if you know you're scared you might offend him god is like uh, uh just tell me exactly what you want from me ask for what you need this is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in if your little boy asks for a serving of fish do you scare him with a live snake on his plate if your little girl asks for an egg do you trick her with a spider as bad as you are in comparison to god you wouldn't think of such a thing you're at least decent to your own children and don't you think the father who conceived you in love will give you the holy spirit and anything else you need when you ask him isn't that fabulous he's like look uh i know y'all all gone to bed but i need some bread <laughs> and i know that i am irritating you right now but i'm gonna need you to get up and you know what they're gonna get up and so God is like, yeah, if you being evil know how to give good things, I, I, I'm much better than that. So we're, we got to be irritating when it comes to getting our needs met from God. And then um, I love in Genesis 18 and 23, it talks about when God, well, we got to read it because I need to show you something. We got to read it. I'm sorry. Somebody get uh, Kim. So can you get Genesis eighteen twenty three for me? Sure can. My my iPad's trying to install new software. Not now, please. Okay, Genesis eighteen twenty three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Genesis eighteen twenty three says, and this is the King James version. Okay. Um, Abraham drew near and said, will that also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Continue to read. Yes. 
preadventure there be 50 righteous within the city, will that also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are, are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham said, behold, now I have taken upon me to speak to the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure, there shall like five of the 50 righteous will not destroy the city for the lack of five. <laughs> and he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake to him again, yet again, and again. said, shall I be 40 found? And I will not, you know, do it for the 40 sake. Then he said, oh, Lord, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak preadventure. Shall they, can they be 30? <laughs> Listen, this will get me. I like how he said, don't be angry. He don't care if the Lord is angry because he's going to keep going. <laughs> right? He's already gone from yeah. 50 to 30. Yes. So then he says, um, in, in number 32, he said, oh, Lord, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak ye but this once. Preadventure 10. Shall there be ten, and I will not destroy the city for ten. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left, commuting with Abraham, and Abraham and turned to this place. So from fifty, it went to ten, and look, look, we know he was irritated, basically. But he was like, "Look, God, I mean, he." And this is what I love. It's like when you have a relationship with God. Abraham, it's Bible says that Abraham walked with God. A Abraham had a, re a relationship with him. So because he had a relationship with God, even though he was God, he was like, look, I, I, I know, I know that, I, I mean, I really don't want you to say it, but, but, or, uh, what'd you do? Come on, really, you're not going to destroy these, like, these few just because you didn't have five? Like, you can't, like, it just cracks me up the way he did that. He was irritating, okay? So Abraham, and then Jacob in um, Genesis 32, 26. Ooh. <laughs> um, let me interrupt you real quick. Go ahead, Did go you ahead. see Keisha's chat? Um, wait, wait. She, can can, can you share that with us, Dr. Keisha? He said, don't be irritated. So I love it. In the Message Bible, he actually said, don't be irritated in verse 30. So Yes, in verse 30, he said, it says, he said, Master, don't be irritated with me, but right. what if only 30 are found? But I'm going to be irritating, <laughs> but don't be irritated with me, please. <laughs> I love it. What if only 30 were found? That's it. That makes my heart just sing. Genesis. So, so that, that clearly tells us there are time saints when we're going to have to, you know, it's just it, it go to God. You know, Lord, Lord, I know this can be done. Lord, Lord, you know, what is your will? Lord, Lord, can you? And, and, and God is so loving. You know, sometimes, you know, we hear, okay, if you ask him one time, don't ask again. But that is not right. what... Right, it's like you ask God over and over and over, right? Now, we, he doesn't want vain repetition, right? That empty... Right. You are passionate and persistent. That's what God wants. That's yes. It. So go ahead, Gwen. I'm, I'm so no, excited no, about this. No, that, that makes me so, so heart right there, yes. Um, so Genesis 32, 26. Is where uh, Jacob you got that, huh? You want someone to read that for you? No, I got it. Um, the man said, Genesis thirty-two twenty-six in the message. The man said, "Let me go. It's daybreak." Jacob said, I, "And this man, of course, is symbolic of God." J Jacob said, "I'm not letting you go till you bless me." So that's the attitude God wants us to have. We're not letting go. We're not giving up. We are not. We're not fainting. We're not. The Bible says that you, you're not fit if you put your hands to the plow and look back. It's like, we're not looking back. We're not going back. Nothing. We, we are not letting go until you bless us. But now my favorite, favorite, favorite is Hezekiah. Yes. Tell us about him. I miss some Hezekiah. I love me some Hezekiah. So, okay, I wasn't going to read it. But let me see. Let me do it. 
Because I was going, yeah, Hezekiah, where are you? Let me see. Where is the book to Hezekiah? Okay, but I can't find it, but let me show, I'll tell you. So I wasn't going to read it, that's why I didn't write it down. But I love this um, where Hezekiah can't find it for me because I know you were, you and I were both talking about that. Okay. But Go ahead. so it talks about the fact that God comes to Hezekiah and says, Get your affairs in order because today you're going to die. And what I love about this is that none of us, I don't think, have had God himself come to us and say, you about to die today. Like, we feel like we're going to die. We feel like we've got these circumstances and situations that are so difficult that we just cannot make it. But we just have not had God himself come and do that. And so it really struck me when in, in the Old Testament, this isn't even New Testament, right? In the Old Testament, God says, look, today is it. Today's your day. And, and the Bible talks about how Hezekiah was laying there and he didn't just accept the, de the death sentence from God himself. He turned his face to the wall, the Bible says, and he basically asked God to, like, to change his mind. <laughs> I'm like, that is the ultimate in irritating. It's like, what? Boy, didn't I tell you? <laughs> right? Like, that's what we would do. As parents, our kids come to us and they challenge something we said. Did you find it? <laughs> I did. It is Isaiah 38, yes, the 38 I chapter, and it. the first verse. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set that house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Come on. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart, have not I have done that which is good in thy sight. And he wept. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, hmm. go and say to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Come on. Come on. That thing right there messes me. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. Come on, y'all. Isn't that amazing? He's like, look, I'll call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. And, you know, and over and over, I, I challenge you to go through the Old Testament, look at Sodom, look at all those chapters of just that talk about utter destruction and all the, the evil that was going to come upon the Israelites because of the sin and all the things that they did. And I mean, just look at all the, the death and destruction that God declares and shows and demonstrates. And then at the end of all of that, every time he says, but if you call on me, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to keep my covenant to you. I'm going to show yeah. you my promise. I mean, that thing right there. Ooh, I didn't bring no tissue today. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that thing right there. Wait, I got a paper towel. Oh, that thing right there. <laughs> So God wants us to be irritating because we know who he is. We know the, the we know just the, his character, the depth of his love for us, that he said anything, you know, anything you need, I am that I am. I am whatever you need at the time. And if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. And so we've got to have that kind of attitude about God that, you know what, God, uh, I know, you know, I know I got this situation. They about to come take my car. But you know what, God, if, if, if you don't pay for the car, I don't need a car. If you don't provide the car, I walk. If you don't like, it's like we got to get to the place where we just we got to know who we're dealing with. That's how you get to be irritating. My husband, my family, my friends, Kim, like Kim, Kim, get to that point. She don't know. Like if I need something from Kim, at some point I'll be like, "Girl, I don't care if I'm making you mad or not. I'm like, I need you to do this for me because yeah, but you, that's the kind of relationship you have with people that you know." And, and, and not only that, Gwen, I, I, I'm reminded of the fact that it's amazing how in the natural, um, when we're irritating the people, sometimes they don't want no parts of us. 
Right. But God embraces our irritation. Come on. God embraces me when I'm in his face constantly. He yes. doesn't get tired of me. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. where, where someone be like, oh my God, here she comes. They want to run and hide from me. The Lord said he's a rewarder of those who seek him. So that means what irritates man, what turns man off against me, God embraces my irritation. So that is, that is so important. So, so no, yes, it, it comes a point where we can say something to God and we believe his word. We don't have to ask him again. Right. But there, there comes a time when, yeah, you may have to go back just like Abraham. You, uh, you know, you may have to go just like Hezekiah. You know, you may have to fight and hold on like Jacob and said, I'm not letting go, God, until you bless me. Because he knows, wow, Sharonda is serious. Valerie is serious. You know, Samantha, Dr. Keisha, Leslie, you know, Chanel, they're serious, they're serious. about me to the point where, I, they're they're constantly before me. Oh, they're fasting this week. Oh, wow, they just fasted last week. They just came off a 21-day fast. No, 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 God, I want something else from you. I'm going to fast again next week. You know, or I'm going to fast this day. I'm going to stay before your face. I am going to be irritated <laughs> until you bless and see, see, while you were talking, that reminded me of um, it's Isaiah 42, 3. I'm reading it from the message. He says, um, he won't brush aside the bruise and the hurt, and he won't disregard the small and insignificant, but he'll steadily and firmly set things right. So it's like Ooh. God God loves it when we're irritated. He's like, God, God loves it when we're so broken that we can't do anything without him, when we recognize that we can't do anything without him. So that's it. Okay, I'm snotted enough on that one. Oh, Jesus. That's good. That was good. That's good. That was so... Does anybody have any comments on that one? Anybody have any questions on anything we've done so far? Or I want to make a comment on it. Because remember what we said. This is not just a class where Gwen and I are just teaching you. We are learning from each other, saying. Come on now. So in the beginning, for anyone that missed, we talked about iron sharpening iron. That's a confession. So that means I help you, you help me. We help each other in this God stalker's walk. So does anyone have a comment or anyone want to add something to what um, Sister Gwen was saying in reference to, you know, being a God stalker is, is about being irritating and not being ashamed to be irritating. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> be confident in your irritation. That's right. Do it with boldness. <laughs> yes. I like Does it. Does anyone have a comment? <laughs> no? All right. All right. We're going to go on. So, um, Number 20, you know you are a God, you, you know you're a God stalker if you have a heart condition. You have a heart condition. I'm trying to make sure I don't do too many. I got one, two, three. So I'll do one more, Kim, and then you can do, or no, you can do the next one, right? 21? You gonna do 21? Um, 20, 20, 21 or I'm not doing 21. You're doing 21 days. Okay, all right. So you have a heart condition. Hosea 10, 12 says, um, oh, I was almost there. Got distracted. Hosea 10, 12. So this is about breaking up the fallow grounds, right? Hosea 10, 12. I'm going to read it out of the New King James because that one is a little too different for me. Hosea. There we go. Sorry, y'all. It's like you, you, when you have too many Bibles to choose from. <laughs> Good problem to have. I have to say, I love paper and having a physical Bible in my hand is fabulous, but you really can't beat how quick you can get through these scriptures with all these different versions on an app. Um, Hebrews 10, 12, sow yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteous, righteousness on you. And of course, they're using all of this um, agricultural um, imagery. Sow yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. So fallow ground really relates to the, um, you know, when 
when they're about to plant. Now I don't know nothing about plant. No, <laughs> I know all I know is what I've heard. But when you're about to plant a seed, you can't plant the seed in just hard stony ground. You have to break it up first so that it can actually accept the seed. So here, Hosea is basically saying we've got to break up our own the the fallow ground of our hearts so that we can receive the seed of the word of God. Um, and so you have a heart condition because you have conditioned your heart to receive the word of God. I like that. I, I didn't make that up. That just came to me. <laughs> then Matthew, <laughs> Matthew 15, 19 talks about how everything proceeds out of our hearts. Matthew 15, 19 says, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Verse 20 says, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So it's talking about not washing your hands ceremonially before you eat, like the, the Pharisees used to, um, you know, used to have all these rituals. That, and they said, okay, if you eat with these dirty hands, you're gonna defile yourself. And he's saying, look, it's not what, what you're putting in from the outside, it's what's coming out of you. It's what's coming out of your heart. You know, adultery, fornication, fornication comes out of your heart and is not a physical thing. Like, and of course there is a, um, a physical component when we are engaged in sexual sin, but, but really you're, Let's see, when you're overtaken in that and you just cannot, ultimately, it's out of your heart. That's coming out of your heart. Um, if you lie in on people left and right, even if it's like little teeth, like what they call, what they, the li white lie, we make ourselves feel better about, <laughs> about sin. Oh, I didn't really, it wasn't a big lie. It was just a little lie. Like just telling somebody, oh, you know, oh, I'm not, tell them I'm not home. And just because you don't want to talk. I mean, sometimes we, we just lie for no reason. Like really, if you don't want to talk to somebody, if you don't want to go somewhere, all you have to do is just say, no, I'm not going to go. You don't have to lie, you know? And, um, but that's the kind of stuff, it comes out of our heart. And you ever, have you ever, um, maybe you, oh, maybe you, you used to cuss a lot, you know, before you were born again. And then once you got saved, you, you consciously made the decision you were going to cuss no more. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, years go by. And something happens, and one of the words just comes out. <laughs> that, but that, that's, it was in your heart. It came from your heart. And so there is, the Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So it's, that's why we have to break up the fallow ground of our heart so that we can prepare it. And we have to do that work. Um, Psalm 119.11 says um, that I hide your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you. And so we can't resist sin with our flesh, right? It's like they say you can fight fire with fire, but this is one of those instances where you can't do that. We can't fight sin by sinning some more. So like, and what I mean by that is just willfully trying to decide in our own ability that we are not going to sin. That's not possible. That's why we have to know God. We have to have God. Um, because we need his help and we need to get to a place a God stalker knows how bad they need God. So we're not trying to pretend. We're not coming up trying to talk about, well, God, I've kept this commandment and this commandment, and this commandment, you know, I, that have I kept since my youth up. Like, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me because I've done everything right. Like, no, th that's not us. We're breaking up the fallow ground in our hearts saying, God, I, I've got this, this, my, you replaced this stony heart with a heart of flesh and my heart is is just tender toward you my heart is tender and but my heart becomes tender toward god because i am hiding the word of god in my heart and after a while the word of god like pushes out it, it softens the heart it gets us to a place where we're able to actually obey god serve god love god stalk god it's like, there's nothing that we can do in our own ability. I can't be good enough. I can't do the scriptures enough. I can't quote enough. I can't read enough. I can't fast enough. But those are the things, though, that when I do them with a, a, a 
true and honest desire to know God, then he says, look, I'm going to answer you. If you seek me, you're going to find me. But that's going to be, but that word of God is going to help to tenderize our hearts. It's so the Lowry's, the word of God is like Lowry. Sorry, that was, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but, <laughs> Like one of them, like one of the mallets that you beat the meat with, the tenderizer. So the word of God does that for us. And then I love this. Hebrews 10, 16. You got to go there. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant. This is the New King James this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. And so we're at a place in, in our lives where God wants to put his laws in our hearts. He, does, he doesn't want us to be governed externally by the Ten Commandments. Like, you know, we're, you know, you hear about Christians fighting in their, in their towns and uh, their cities because the Ten Commandments were removed from a wall somewhere. And God is like, the, that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. So now we've got a new and better covenant. So, but this covenant now he says there is a law of love. So the law of love supersedes all of the Ten Commandments. If you love, you, we don't even have to talk to you about Ten Commandments because you're not doing any of that stuff. Love is greater. Love is higher. And he's saying now, I don't even want you to have, I don't even want you to have prophets that have to come to you and tell you what I say. He's like, I want to write my laws in your heart. I want my spirit to live on the inside of you. I want to have a relationship directly with you, right? And that's, that's where we are. If So we have a heart condition. It's because the word of God has been planted in our hearts and we have broken up the fallow ground. When we recognize something, when that, that cuss word comes out or you get irritated, like Kim was talking about her neighbor, she just didn't like the woman. Let me tell you, is there somebody you just, just don't like? Sometimes it just happens. You run into people. I'm, I'm one of those people I get along with a whole bunch of folks. I mean, I, it's rare that I don't, I don't like someone. But it happens. We're all human. But when any of those things happen, God is basically just showing us what's in our heart. He's like, you ain't that holy. Like, you're not as holy <laughs> as you are, right? And, and it's just, and even he says, um, there's a place in the Mr. Translation where it says, when you get on each other's nerves, don't snap at each other. And so, so basically be angry. And I think it's, I think in the King James, it says be angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can be mad all you want to, but it's sinful when you express that anger towards someone, because God's saying we're, you can't be an attractive lover and give them a piece of your mind at the same time. <laughs> you, you need all of your mind so that you can serve Christ. And we need to, but, and when we see those things that come up, when we catch ourselves and you know, the Holy Spirit will say, you know, that don't say that. And you say it anyway. It's like, God wants us to be quick to repent. Even if we do say it anyway, he wants us to come back at some point and go, you know what? I'm sorry. I, you know, please Lord cleanse me. And you get that word of God and you do the work and you talk to the people. And sometimes you can, you can deal with situations in your, with God and your own heart. But sometimes you do have to go to somebody and say, you know what? I'm really sorry. Um, you know, and, there have, been, there have been people who've said, I was really mad at you. And they come and they tell you all these terrible things that they thought about you. And now, now you got a problem. <laughs> now, you, now you're so offended. You're like, what? And you knew nothing about it. So sometimes you just got to use wisdom. Sometimes you, you just need to deal with it yourself because there's something going on in your own heart. But then there are going to be those times when you have to go and talk to that person. I don't know why we keep coming back to that. So maybe, maybe we all need to hear that a little bit you know, more tonight. And so then, so number 21, I love this. You know you're a God stalker if you are in business. Isn't that great? Luke 2.49, you know, when Jesus disappeared, you know, he was young uh, and still living with his mother Mary. 
and um and he disappeared and remember they were looking for him everywhere and they're all she was all worried and concerned and then when he finally when they finally found him um they were like oh all distraught like where where have you been and he said don't you know that i'm go i was gonna be about my father's business so if you are a god stalker you are about the father's business and i love it because the father's business anybody well let me ask you what do you think the father's business is how about that you can put it you can you can unmute yourself i think and or you can put it in the chat what do you think the father's business is yeah i know gwenna called your name <laughs> Well, let's see. Shawanda was early too. She she was another one that was that came early. Shawanda. Let me unmute. Okay. So, what do you think? Yes. Your father's business can, is? can you hear me? Because I'm driving. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the father's business is basically your ministry or what you're called to do for him. I mean, that could be his business. That's good. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Okay. So let me see. So Shawanda got hers on. Let's see. I'm gonna I see Valerie sent something. Where's Valerie? Yeah, she sent it through the chat. I love it. She said, "My life." Yes. See. Yes. She's trying wow. to. She's trying to preach my message. See, I got another message about that. But yes, your life. Yes, your life is God's business. And uh, Shawanda said, "Your that um, your ministry." The ministry and the work that God has called you to do is God's business. And so the other way to think about that too is God's business is people, is loving people, right? Because right. Jesus was, did he, he was teaching in the synagogues. It says anything pertaining to his children is the father's business. Bringing others to him is the father's business. Yes. yes. So yes, we're God stalkers. We got to be about that. And let me tell you, I'm going to be real honest. Yes. I count on like a couple of fingers how many times I personally led someone to Christ. And I was thinking about that probably a few weeks ago. It's like, it shouldn't be this monumental like thing where we can say, you know, uh, on this day at this conference in this city in the, in the year of our Lord, I prayed with somebody <laughs> like, with that, that shouldn't be what's going on. Because if we're about the father's business, right, then, I mean, clearly, I mean, I teach and I, I mean, I've done other things where I've, I've um, you know, trained and helped people and that kind of stuff. And so there's no way I'm believing God that just the fruit of the work that I'm doing, like what we're doing with God Stalkers, that that's making a difference for people. There's no way for us to know fully exactly, like, exactly the impact. But at the same time, if we're supposed to be bringing others to Christ, we shouldn't be like, I mean, there should be evidence that we're doing that. Um, what did Dr. Keisha say something? What did you say? Yeah, said, um, I can think about the times that he has told me to say something to someone and he did not let me rest until I was going to be, oh, well, hello. Ooh, hello. Yes. Come on yes. now. And that's, it's, yes, being ten, be even, even sensitive to his voice to know he's telling you to go say something. And not being ashamed to do it because literally God has dealt with me with total strangers, Come on. total strangers. I remember when we moved my daughter, um, the end of July, my youngest daughter moved to Arizona. So we, we, we go, we, we're getting the car from the rental place and the young girl, she just starts talking to us and that God is showing favor from the time our feet landed in right. the state. Right. right. So, as the, the, there's this young girl who's doing the paperwork for the rental car and she's sharing with me some things. Before I know it, we had to lock hands with this child, me, my husband, my daughter, and we went into prayer right there. Wow. So being about God's business, you can't be ashamed as a God stalker to be about his business because he will put you out there whenever he feel like it and he, okay. you're going to do what he say. Come on. So we've been in there on the spot we got to be able to be about the business. Yes. I mean, I've seen times when I've been in the, in the store and, and the Lord just, you know, you start a conversation with somebody. Next thing you know, you say, do you mind if I pray with you? You know, God will put us about his business anytime he feels like it. Yes. Anywhere he feels like it. It could be a situation on your job, in the church. It, are you about his business? Are you telling someone that he's a healer? He's a deliverer. 
You know, he's, he, he is love. You know, he, he's a provider. Yeah. That is being about God's business. Sometimes it's not even as deep as, oh, us being on the pulpit or something like that. No, just, just to call someone to say, hey, you know, I was thinking about you today. I just want you to know that I love you and God loves you. Just a simple phone call. God is say, pick up that phone and call some, this person and just let them know you love them and you're thinking about them. You don't know what that's doing. You know why? Because it ain't your business. You're about God's business. Come on. So sometimes he don't even tell you the business. He just needs you to do the business. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you don't even know why you're doing it. He, it's not your business. Just do it. Why? Because God knows that that person needed to hear that. You know, God knew that. <laughs> Valerie says preach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. No. But, but it's true. It's you true. Know, sometimes we don't know. But our you thing is just be And you can't be concerned about who it is either. Because Ooh, I know. Because there have been times like when we go when we, we've been to a couple of women's conferences recently and you know, there may, God may even have you say something to the person that just got up there and preached, you know, preached everybody happy and everybody fell out of the power. You might, there may be one little thing you say to them, just thanking them for their ministry. You don't know what they're dealing with. And they're, right. they're operating under the anointing and the ability of God, but you don't know what's going on in their natural life. You don't know the war that they are going through as they are doing or even before they got there. And so when you walk up to him just in obedience to say, you know what, that really changed my life today. Just something simple like that. You never know what that does, what that's going to do for them. But that's being about the father's business, saying that word, being the one that will listen and be quick to respond when you hear. But, and I think even proactively believing God to, to have, to, to, to bring people to you. I think sometimes I, I know for me, I don't even go out with a necessarily expectation that God's going to give me somebody to speak to. I'm so focused on like what he's called me to do or the thing I'm trying to accomplish that I, I'm not really thinking necessarily about how, how that, that woman might feel behind the counter who's checking me out. Like I feel like God wants us to just be so much more tender hearted toward people in general. And, um, but that's about his business, but putting people first. And making sure, you know, even like um, the Samaritan, when, you know, the, uh, the religious people, they, they ran by him, but because they were on their way to go to church, right? And, yeah, and it was about their own business. <laughs> they were about their own they, business, right? Like, I, got, I, I got time to do with you. I got to get to church. And so, but, mm -hmm. but, but the Samaritan, they loved him, you know, and they took care of him and they, they went out of their way. And I think being, um, we need to be available to allow God to interrupt our lives so that we can help people. Mm -hmm. That's what he cares about. That's all he cares about. All this other right. stuff I do. And we're, and, and like, I think there's this place in, um, in the in message that talks about doing God programs. So we can, we can even create programs, uh, that are supposedly godly and the purpose is supposed to be of, of God, but then we're, we're leaving out people. And that's when he said, don't just pretend to love them, really love them. Um, but anyway, so let's go to Matthew 25. So you know you're a God soccer if you're in business. So there's two places where we have the parable of the talents. So I wanted to read um, one in Matthew. Matthew 14, the kingdom of heaven, I'm going to go through really fast. Kingdom of heaven is like a man, this is the new century version, like a man who was going to take oh, another place for a visit, but, but before he left, he called for his servants and told them to take care of his things while he was gone. He gave one servant five bags of gold, another servant two bags of gold, and the third servant one bag of gold to each one as much as he could handle. Then he left. So in, in, I think in the other one, it, talks, it doesn't talk about gold. It talks about talents. So talents, of course, is money. But um, also you can, you can liken that to gifts. God has given us certain gifts and abilities, right? Um, then he left. So the servant who got five bags went quickly to invest the money and earn five more bags. In the same way, the servant who had two bags invested and earned two more. But the servant who got one bag went out and dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Verse 19, after a long time, the master came home and asked the servants what, did they, uh, what they did with his money. What did you do with the gift God gave you? That's what, he, that's what he's going to ask you, That basically what this parable is talking about, or one of the things that it, that it brings out. 
The servant who was given five bags of gold brought five more bags to the master and said, Master, you trusted me to care for five bags of gold, so I used your five bags to earn five more. So now they have 10. The master answered, you did well. You are a good and loyal servant. Because you were loyal with small things, I will let you care for much greater things. Come and share my joy with me. Then the servant who had been given two bags of gold came to the master and said, master, you gave me two bags of gold to care for. So I used your two bags to earn two more. He doubled what he was given as well. The master answered, you did well. And um, then verse 24, then the servant who had been given one bag of gold came to the master and said, master, I knew that you were a hard man. You, you harvest things you did not plant. You gather crops where you did not sow any seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your money in the ground. Here is your bag of gold. That don't make no sense at all. You are, tell, you are telling God himself, you, you, get, you reap where you haven't even sown. And I'm like, okay, so if this is who you're dealing with, what, what were you trying to do with that? I, I don't get it. Like, it's illogical. Disobedience is illogical. <laughs> uh, he says, I'm afraid. Here is your bag of gold. And the master answered, you are a wicked and lazy servant. You say you knew that I harvest things I did not plant and that I gather crops where I did not sow any seed. So you should have put my money, put my gold in the bank. Then when I came home, I would have received my gold back with interest. So the master told his other servants, take the bag of gold from the servant and give it to the servant who has 10 bags of gold. Those who have much will get more and they will have more, much more than they need. But those who do not, have much will end will have everything taken away from them then the master said and this is the thing that really gets me throw that useless servant outside into the darkness where people will cry and grind their teeth with pain so he, he was cast in the outer darkness because he misused the gift of god he misused um god's investment and so if you know you're a god stalker if you're in business if you are in the business of pursuing the call of god on your life pursuing um learning who you are what de defining what are my gifts and then doing everything you can to use those gifts and employ those things in so basically so that you can do the father's business you can take your place in the father's business right there's so much more that god has been dealing with me about about money and business and talent and all of that but um i think that there's just I don't know. I think the it's just so powerful when he talks about the fact that the one that basically hid the talent and wasted it and didn't and bring more. So we're talking about all the stuff we don't have most of the time without really focusing as much on what God did give us. And many times when I ask people, well, what are your gifts? What are your talents? What are your abilities? You know, they, most of the time we can't answer. Most of the time somebody asks you, well, what's your purpose? Why are you here? Most of the time we can't answer. Even if you take a scripture and say, I'm, I'm about my father's business. My purpose is to be about my father's business. Okay, so what about that? What part of God's business are you supposed to be doing? And so we haven't dug deep enough to be able to answer those questions, but God's holding us accountable for that because you saw how he dealt with the servant who said, look, I, I knew you was hardcore, so I just hid what you gave me so I can make sure I would bring that back to you. And he's like, it's not enough for you to bring back what I gave you. You have to give, you got to bring more. So God has given us everything that we need to get started. He's made that initial investment in our, in our companies. And now he's expecting us to produce and, and to, to bring back more than what he gave us. It's not enough to say, well, you know, uh, I made it to heaven. Like that's not, that's not what he's interested in, right? So um, there are a ton of scriptures about work and, and you can do it, like do a quick like Google search or the, the word work in the Bible and go through it, it, it amazes me. James 125, um, this one, I used to think that this said one thing until one day I saw the word work. Um, this is New King James Version. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearing, but a doer of the, I used to think it said doer of the word. This one will be blessed in what he does. But it doesn't say that, does it? It says, a forgetful he and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work isn't that something he wants us to be a doer of the work and not and so you can't be a doer of the word without working um but i love that the scripture pulls out the word work then this is my other new favorite um galatians 6 
four and five. Everybody around me going to be able to quote this after a while because I keep bringing this one up. And I love it from the message. So let me get it there. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you've been given and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. So you know you're a God stuffer uh, if you are in business. What time do we have? Yeah, it's time. We're going to have to add it and add it, talk it up. Okay, so we're, we're gonna end it. We're gonna end the series there, um, and but I will post. I'll I'll do like a quick summary on the. There's a Godstalkers, a Confessions of a Godstalkers page. If you go to the Godstalkers.club homepage and click on that link in the uh, the title in the um, schedule, it'll take you to the Confessions of a Godstalkers page, and then we'll go ahead and type out the rest of them there, and. Um, <laughs> the last one is, you know, you're a God stalker if you have lost your mind. <laughs> it's really good. But um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we will be actually putting together a book. So that'll be coming soon. And um, you'll see the, the cover of that on that God Confessions of the God Stalkers page. Just want to once again, thank you so much for taking time out of your evening. And, but we are so appreciative and grateful that you take the time to, to be a part of this class. So who's going to pray us out? Yes, we pray out, guys. Um, so we, we, we give you a chance to volunteer this, to be the person who right. prays out. That's what we're doing. But we will, we will choose you. <laughs> so, and, and, and we hope you've learned. And, 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 and what we learned through this series, which was Confession of a God Stalkers, next week we'll start a different series. But we hope you learned a lot of what it is about being a God Stalker. So who wants to pray? Because God stalkers pray. <laughs> I think Leslie, either Leslie or Chanel. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, Chanel. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And so, Lord, we thank you, Father, for this Bible study session, Father. I pray now, oh God, that you will continue, Father, to give us a longing and a hunger and a thirst after you, Father. God, that we will be true God stalkers indeed, oh God. Father, that when your people uh, see us, they would see you, God. I pray, Father, that you will continue to strengthen uh, and bless this group. I pray, Father, that you would continue to bless uh, the leaders of the group and uh, continue to bless uh, Rainfire and uh, Pastor Joe as well as uh, Pastor Corey. We thank you and we bless you, Father, for these things we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Everyone's muted. Yeah, I think so. So, good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank good night. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>